forget today what it must have been like to be female in a city in the 19th century, let alone to be a female artist or try to be an artist if you were a woman in the 19th century. There's an anecdote I heard which always strikes me, and that is the story of a middle-class woman who got separated from her chaperone in the new modern city of Paris in the 19th century and talked about how traumatic it was to be walking and to be looked at with this predatory gaze of men in the city, seeing her and assuming because she was on her own, dressed in quite fine clothes, that she must have been a prostitute. I certainly know I still feel sometimes when I walk through the city that the gaze is very strong in certain places and it's like a physical thing. So for women at the time in the 19th century, Bert Morisot, how did she become an artist? Well, she came from this wealthy background and like many women of her class, she did have drawing lessons, art lessons, and in fact, her wealthy parents managed to get her to study under Corot, who was a very respected, well-known artist. But Bert Morisot couldn't go to the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, she couldn't go to life drawing classes, and in fact, it was seen for a woman to be a professional artist to somehow denature them as a woman. If you look at Bert Morisot's subject matter, a great deal of it is based in domestic interiors, but she's so fantastic at them. I think very many, different to many male artists, she really manages to get across a type of psychological atmosphere, a sense of these very intimate relationships between family members. I love the portrait she did of her sister Corneille and her mother in their front parlor with this rather sort of shimmering mirror on the wall behind. I love the way her mother's absorbed in her needlework. You have the sense that they're very comfortable together in the quietness of long hours. I like the story about this painting, that she did submit it to the state-run salon exhibition, and she feigned in her modest and very polite way to Manet, her brother-in-law, that she wasn't quite sure of the status of this painting, how good it was. And when he submitted it for her, he decided to finish it for her with a few flourishes. And I think Bette Morisot was quite disturbed and upset by this. She did paint one or two paintings in public spaces. I think it's quite interesting, that beautiful painting in the National Gallery in London, Summer's Day, where it's in the Bois de Boulogne. And although a public space, this was a place that middle-class women could go to. I like the way she still confines the women in the space of the painting within the boat. You've got the sense of a speeding carriage on a pathway on the other side of the lake behind and the ducks bobbing on the water. I love the way she uses this broken, sketchy brushwork to create this sense of a shimmering light and movement of the boat bobbing around on the water and this sense of a heat haze. What's really extraordinary about Bert Morisot is that she manages to balance this sense of being wealthy, beautiful, middle class, being a wife, being a mother, and being an artist. And an artist who was associated with a group of radical artists who were painting with these very unacademic, sketchy technique, with these new modern subject matter. Bette Morris's subject matter, as I say, comes from a type of amateur tradition that women artists use, genre scenes, domestic scenes, portraits of friends and family. She also started using a type of modern visual culture around advertising, fashion plates. But I think what's interesting about this context, this moment that perhaps allows her to be a woman artist, is that male artists like Degas and Manet and others are also entering a subject matter, domestic interiors, genre scenes, which were about modernity, modern life. And perhaps there's a sort of marriage here that gave her female subject matter a type of platform and space. Critics in the end of the 1880s certainly celebrated her work for having this very feminine quality. It was an extraordinary negotiation, wasn't it, for Bert Morisot, between these different social coordinates. There was a letter that she wrote in 1890, not long before her death. She said, I don't think there's ever been a man who's treated a woman as equal. That's all I would have asked for, because I know I'm worth as much as they. I'm Lizzie Perrot. This is London Art Studies.